All right. Well, as always, thank you for your support on Patreon. Uh, please give this video a like. It helps us out with the channel a whole lot. So what I have here is a... Uh, it's kind of like a... If you were to put a machine on repeat and just keep making it and making it. And here we are almost 30 years later and Hoover has been bought and sold so many times and they're still making the same thing. <laughs> it's the same steam cleaner. It's a Hoover spin scrub. Uh, which is kind of an innovative idea in that rather than having a motor um, or belt drive, they just basically put a turbine in there for a pump, put a turbine in there for the brushes, and the pump turbine's only used when you have the tools, so it's gravity fed. Um, super simplistic. And it just works. So that, that's that's why it's been recycled for so many years through so many different owners. Um, and this one's no different. Uh, and today we're going to go pretty thorough on this because I'm going to do a motor change. Um, the motor is questionably defective from the factory, though I believe it to be related to the customer. But through customer service, we're just going to go ahead and replace the motor. Uh, this just pops out in these. Um, and these are not all the same between them. So some of the little differences they did was they would change the turbos. Uh, and these sometimes have four, sometimes they have five, sometimes they have six bristles. And then the configuration is different. They even made one that had like 15 bristles on it. It was kind of gimmicky. So I've got a nice parts box from Hoover. So we can kind of continue this. So now you're going to get to see me remove a lot of screws from the machine. Which apparently is very popular uh, with the kids these days. I'm just going to go ahead and re start removing what I know has to be removed from the machine. And Hoover put some really helpful uh, little arrows to kind of guide you. They notice they're not next to those screws in terms of what we're doing. Um, so it's it's very serviceable. Um, it's a little tedious, but very, very serviceable. Got a little bit of dog hair on here. I do think these machines are a lot more reliable than uh, the Bissells are for the price. Uh, these machines can be had as low as 100 and as high as about 175 for the Hoover. Um, but tip typically I see around just over 100 for these. Um, so I'm trying to make sure all the screws are out. Alright, so that is cover that will pop off. We got this guy. And here is this little switch. So this little switch is something that I have seen on by done by Rug Doctor. I've seen it done by different manufacturers. And what this is is it is a quick dry switch, and it's it's a flow regulator that's designed to let less water out so that you don't oversaturate your carpet because people commonly do that. And it's not a bad idea um, for customers. Uh, to, to regulate how much water they put out. Not that this puts out a lot of water, um, but people do tend to overdo it. So I want to just explain to you what's going on in here. So water comes down here. And there's two pads it can take. One will go to this turbine, which powers this pump, which then goes out to the tools, which you have to plug in and connect separately. The other of which, um, in here, which is released by the trigger mechanism, goes down here, through here, into that flow regulator, and for models without this it just goes straight into the turbine. And this is not a pump, it's just a distribution. Um, so it's a manifold that just distributes the water through. It's all gravity fed. Really, really simple. There's no heater, none of that, though they do claim that this machine has heat. And what they are claiming that the machine does is through 
this right here, which is where the motor exhausts, that that's the heat. Um, yeah, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble here. So we've currently for around right there with the screw count. And most of these screws are the same on here, so you can kind of just keep pulling the screws off and keep pulling the screws off. Um, next thing I, I'm going to pull off is I'm going to pull this guy out. Try not to break anything. The spring is not capped up, by the way. And that's just going to give me access to some more screws. Um, and I had a, kind of a strange customer complaint on this one that it was that their breaker was tipping. Um, and, you know, I was asking, well, how many amps is your breaker? You know, all that. You know, just trying to make sure I didn't have an old house or something. Um, I would be willing to bet that it's his wiring in his house, actually, more than this motor. But we are going to find out. Anyway, so in the name of customer service, we're just going to change the motor out. Uh, probably flip in the cord just to be on the safe side. Maybe not the cord. We'll see. I have to now, this is where a new uh, employee I was training had trouble. There's just a screw here and a screw here on the motor that you're removing as well. Uh, he used to do that and end up breaking this motor housing. Which, you know, of course we replaced for the customer, but still. <laughs> Alright, oh, we got one more. And everything's black and everything kind of just blends together in here. So there's a turbine. And if uh, these turbines spin pretty freely. If they don't, uh, they either need to be taken apart, cleaned out, and greased, or replaced. Generally, replacing is easier, because uh, it's a Hoover, the parts are super cost effective. <laughs> um, Alright, so now, on to the screws I remember being different, but they could have changed it. Well, they did change. Okay, put some more screws in here. Hoover's closest to like simplicity or recar in terms of like how many screws you take out when you do service and like reliability and marketing, like the, the whole idea behind the company. And yeah, Hoover makes stuff in the US too, believe it or not. They have a uh, they brought manufacturing back as well. Uh, people don't like to talk about that, but that is true. TTI, now that they're owned by a Chinese company, no longer owned by an American company are doing more American manufacturing than they've done in a long, long time. It's kind of a oddity about them. You know, <laughs> I do have to pull this pump out. I didn't want to, because these pumps can crack when you pull them out. But, all right, so now we've stripped it completely of everything. And this cover just goes off to the side. Now we have motor. Honestly, it looks real good to me, but I'm just gonna change it. Right here, we're on the clock. We have parts from Hoover, which came in this very strange carton from Hoover. That's what came from Hoover. Oh, let's see. That's the motor. It is a true bypass motor, which is kind of cool. It's got independent cooling. Um, you know, it's made by this company that I'm not familiar with. I would assume TTI probably owns them. I could be assuming wrong. Oh, there's a fuse in this. So I suppose if the motor was going bad, it would be that fuse. But again, uh, just for the sake of customer service, we're changing all this. Now you'd think that it would be cheaper for them to replace the machine than them pay us to do this, but they don't pay us uh, very much to do these. Um, the going rate on a repair like this is a total of 18 bucks we get paid from them. So there's the switch. Um, and that's, I, I know it's kind of hard to believe for some folks that that's what they pay us, but 
we don't make a ton of motor money with warranty on any company. I think uh, some other companies pay us as high as 25 bucks. Some companies don't pay us at all for warranty. Uh, so we always get the kind of the short end of the stick here. Now I'm replacing the switch here and it's just kind of been a little bitch. Get a little love tap. There's plenty of like orifices in this machine to lose parts. Um, but none of them are big enough <laughs> for anything else. But actually, the switch feels a little different. Oh. Alright, there's the switch. Let's start cutting wires. Ground. White. Cut. So you're going to set this assembly aside for a second. change the cord on this. I'm just kind of kind of avoid it, but we're going to be a little bit on the safe side. We're going to change the cord, which is looks like it would be easy, but you actually can't do it from this cover. <laughs> I'm not sure why there's a clear inspection cover on here, but there is. Uh, all right. There is the cord. Got red marking on here, which I think is kind of interesting. Where to stop? Let's see if the new one's coming with the strain relief. That it is. Right. So we're basically breaking it down to its plastic body. Oh. All right. I'll give you some room to work with, and there's that red point almost makes me wonder if they put this in a cord reel too with that red marking on it. But it's a three-prong cord and to my knowledge Hoover's never had a three-prong cord reel. I can only think of one vacuum company it has and it's Rotho. Come to think of it. So there's like a little hole you just shove everything through. And you just kind of follow the path. And uh, you just kind of put this back on. Here's that red thing down there for reference. That's it. So, you will find quick disconnectors on all of these. You will not find quick disconnectors on the replacement motor where you want them. You will not find wire nut anywhere. So it leads you to question whether you should wire nut or quick disconnect it. Of course, my answer is always quick disconnect. Always, always, always. Uh, so we're going to just do very professionally. Put that guy on. Probably one of the more boring videos I'm making. But whatever. Alright. One more quick disconnect. Yep, for the ground. 
Now I would think that the ground would be screwed into this plastic thing too, but it is not. Kind of an interesting design choice. Unlike a vacuum cleaner, you don't get the amount of static electricity. The steam cleaner, um, being that it's wet, calms things down a bit. Um, you're going to reuse these gaskets. Uh, that's another thing that's wrong. I've seen throwing people off. Uh, for whatever reason, Hoover decided that you must always reuse the gaskets. Uh, I guess it's more cost effective for them in some way. This all smells brand new. I don't have any burnt motor smell in this, which is always a good sign. So we're going to thread in this giant ass fusible link. We got the two gaskets on, and there are arrows here, up top. You're going to line the arrows up. And upon lining those arrows up, you are lining, of course I'm lifting this up when I do that, you are in theory lining up the motor the way it was intended to go in this thing. Well, because because my good friend Compact 9 decided to drop by, we're doing this a little bit later. Um, so after you get the motor situated in there with those two screws, gasket seated, uh, you want to reuse this little foam plug over here. I'll just go um, Now we're going to take the fun part. Bring you real close for the fun part. We're just putting the thing all back together. Um, it wires up super easy, just like any other Hoover. Can't think of any Hoovers with complicated wiring harnesses. Everything just kind of plugs in now that I've terminated the motor with the the quick disconnects. And then the wires just kind of sit in this chamber over here. It's just kind of like a very strange feature of the vacuum. There's just this chamber of wires, <laughs> uh, and it's really low. It's right next to the uh, the intake for the water, so I. I I feel like water could build up in this chamber and possibly come in contact with the wires. Probably not though if they have this on market, but it's just a little superstition of mine. Alright, so, and then this cover goes over it, like so. It's important to put this cover on because this cover uh, shares a couple screws with this cover. And let's put this mess of screws back together. People still call us and ask for directions when they could just fucking Google it. I don't know. Um, so this cover thing has to go on next, um, which is also part of what pedal assembly locks in on. As on older ones, this thing had long, much longer screws, but it's on just a standard screw, which I think is just fine. All right. So. Before you start putting these screws on, you need to fit these things in place because some of them actually are going to pair screws or some of these uh, 
thing's cover of screws, so you need to figure out where they are to put one of the screws back. So in this plug case, oops, uh, all right, I can see three screws that go under this before I put this thing on. Right here. Another one right here. And remember that some screws are going to come up from the bottom. That's something that often overlooked when we have machines like this that are built on a, what I would call a sandwich construction. It is layered up uh, so that once together it's really strong, but the pieces, once they're apart, are not strong. I also suppose now would be a good time to make sure that the uh, cord and motor, new motor and switch work. They do, no surprise there. New motor kind of smells funny. <laughs> uh, Hooper. Alright, so we're going to put three screws in this thing. Oh, the turbo. I guess I should name the thing. Turbines. Air flows in here, and the motor. Part of the problem is this motor is pretty sufficient for the uh, pickup on its own, but because it sh its power gets robbed by this turbine, you don't have the water lift like you would, like the motor should have, and that makes these machines a little bit underpowered, uh, especially when we compare them to something like a rug doctor or a commercial machine. And, you know, that that's a little bit of an unfair comparison on my part, but it is a comparison I'm going to make. Because um, it's a comparison the consumer is going to make. I believe this one... Yeah. So this... At this point, there's... Uh, the, the cover from the back side are where the screws are going to go. So we're going to put this thing... Um, and what this does is open and close the turbine. Um, on some models, the brush speed is adjustable for, I guess, delicate settings. It's, they're not aggressive brushes, so it's kind of a moot point, but it, it, was, it is a feature on some of them. But on this one, we're just going to put this together, like so. And then you just want to actuate it, make sure everything's going how it should. in place and then you got this 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 is the extra this uh, uh, regulatory valve that keeps the water from going out as much why you want that feature I'm not sure but well I guess it's supposed to quick dry the carpets but still I'm skeptical of course deep clean when we're putting this one back together. That will have the cam lined up properly. And again, if these covers don't feel strong, it's because, again, they, they rely on being all together to be strong. And that's the way a lot of machines are. There's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's how it's made. Alright. So, since we're up top, we're going to put the two or three screws we took out up top. And, yep. All right. And we're going to go to the back side and start putting screws in. And remember the holes with the arrows are the ones that are getting screws. I guess the front ones don't have arrows, but all the other ones have arrows going to them. Alright. All done. So now, you want to line this up, and some of these things, they are eccentric. This one seems to be symmetrical. Um, just kind of 
to know when you're putting one of these back together. All right, that locks in. And this is a feature I think is just brilliant. Is that the customer can take off the nozzle and clean it themselves without any tools. Because customers always try want want to clean these, and they should clean them. You know, if hair's in here, well, one your vacuum wasn't working properly. If there's a lot of hair left in your carpet, but that's another subject. Um, but customers always are breaking these trying to take them off. So that making that come off easily just accommodated the customer's natural urge to want to clean clean that. And they did the same thing with the tank. So the tank can be quickly dumped with this rubber plug. But what's cool is you can pull this tank apart and let it air dry so it doesn't get too funky. Speaking of funky, it is funky. Whew. Some enzymes in there will take care of that. Um, you know, so when you're done, you can clean out your, your dirty water tank, which you know I think is a great thing. All that just unlocks and locks easy. This machine is just super easy to use. Um, now I don't have any water in this tank, um, so we're gonna go get water. <laughs> 